In my last video, I talked about some of the concerns I had with the new sampler from Reason Studios, Mimic Creative Sampler. I said that I think it is a great sampler, but it's missing some things that exist in the Ableton stock sampler and the machine stock sampler that I use all the time. And so while I think it's a good sampler and an excellent addition to the Reason Rack, the things that it's missing keep it from being a great sampler. So today we're gonna to compare it back to back to Ableton and Machine, and I'm gonna show you what I think the Reason Mimic Creative Sampler needs to add for it to really stack up. Since my last video, Reason Studios have also done a live stream with Ryan and Matthias going over some of the features of Mimic. I highly recommend checking that live stream out if you haven't already. Matthias does a great job of talking us through some of the cool things you can do with Mimic. So I'll link that in the description. I also wanna highlight some of the things that were mentioned in that live stream that are actually really encouraging in regards to where Reason Studios is going in the future. One of the things I talked about in my previous video was how I wanted Reason Studios to update certain devices. Matthias addresses that and talks about how while Reason Studio's old model perhaps was create an instrument and just have it like that forever, Reason Plus gives them a platform to actually look at iterating and updating instruments in the future. We want to iterate more uh, on the things we do. Many years in the past, we released something and that is the thing it is and, and you right. try not to touch it again. And as we've moved both into subscriptions, but also just in general, learn more, I, I think we're now of a mind where we Will continue to improve things. I'm excited about the potential that that creates for seeing some of the updates that a lot of us want on a lot of the old instruments. Matthias also mentions that pitch detection is coming to mimic. That will be in the final release of Reason 12. It will work the same as in Grain. We heard you loud and clear and there was an, an oversight that it wasn't there really. This is fantastic news. That was one of the big things that I thought Mimic was actually missing. This is an awesome step in the right direction in my opinion. Hopefully we get more updates to Mimic over time. Matthias did mention that you can't load Rex files into Mimic because of maybe some of the coding. I'm not sure I entirely understood what he meant there. Right now, that requires us to change the, the Rack extension SDK. For this release, it was too much time and work to do. We might look at that in the future. We're always eyeing what we can improve there. Dr. Octorex is still probably the best way to work with Rex files there is. But I want to be able to export Rex files from Mimic. I get that this might not be kind of a, an issue that needs to be there right off the bat, but I still really hope this is something that Reason Studios will look at adding in the future. So if you haven't checked out that live stream, definitely go have a look, but let's get into comparing Mimic to some of my other favorite samplers that I use all the time. By the way, Mimic does have a couple of features that I think are missing from the Ableton and the machine samplers. This is part of the reason why, why I actually want Mimic to add some of these other things that are really significant for me and my workflow because as it stands there are a couple of features in Mimic that I just really want to use but it's not enough for it to become kind of a go-to sampler for me. Right off the bat one of the things that I want to mention is the weird effect Mimic seems to be having on my CPU. I don't really understand why this is happening so if you have any idea maybe let me know in the comments. If I set my buffer size to 64, which should be completely fine given how powerful my computer is and how little there is in this project, I start getting this weird CPU thing going where it kind of pumps and does this crazy nonsense. It is only when Mimic is in the rack. Say goodbye, no. I also start getting all of these clicks and pops. I don't understand why that is happening, but I am gonna hope that that's cleared up by September 1st because aside from some of the other frustrations I've got, this is probably the, the biggest thing that would keep me from actually using Mimic consistently <laughs> is the fact that it's destroying my CPU for some reason. So anyway, let's increase that latency again so we don't have to worry about that. In this top track, I have an instance of Mimic. In the second track, I have the same sample loaded into Ableton's Simpler. And I wanted to just compare these back to back so we can get a sense of how they're different and what features are lacking. Never gonna give you up. 
I'm never gonna let you go. This had the sample sounds loaded directly into Simpler. This is what it sounds like loaded directly into Mimic. Never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you go. So not a huge difference there. However, what Ableton does do that I really, really want them to add a mimic is there's the swap mode. You hit it, now it locks it to the tempo. Never gonna give you up. This is particularly useful if you're in slice mode and you're trying to juggle a sample to a BPM that you've already defined in the track. It's just gonna work. So in Ableton, if the warp mode is off, Never gonna give you, up. you get the, the difference in speed as you change pitch. Turn warp mode on. Never gonna give you, up. Never gonna give. you don't get the difference in speed and it locks it to tempo. If we go to Mimic, Never gonna get we get the difference in speed on tape mode, Never but if we go to advanced, Never gonna give you Never gonna Never gonna give it locks the speed. However, we can't do anything in regards to the tempo of our song. That's a problem for me. The other thing that I thought was interesting while we're in this regular pitch mode is if I just play two notes at the same time, Never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you go. In my opinion, that sounds way, way, way better and simpler than Mimic. Here's, here's Mimic. Never gonna give you I'm never gonna let you go. Maybe it's just a setting, but I couldn't figure out how to get both those notes together sounding as good as they do in Simpler. Never gonna give you If we put it on vocal mode, Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give, never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you, never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you up. I can't even get it to sound close with the former. Never gonna. People talk about how good Reason's time stretching is. I think it's good, but Ableton's also great. Like, to me, it's kind of a given at this point that time stretching needs to be good. In this particular case, if I am playing two notes at the same time. I think simpler sounds better. Never gonna give you up. Now, that's not saying I think Mimic sounds bad at playing the notes by itself. Here's the thing that is probably my favorite feature in Mimic. When we hit this fix pitch button. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna give you up. I think that is such a cool feature for dealing with vocal samples. Never gonna give you up. That's something I just could not figure out how to do on Simpler. And right now that's my favorite feature on Mimic. In terms of the basic layout of the samplers, it's basically got everything that Mimic has just in a slightly different format. Mimic does have a couple of extra things like this compressor, which is fantastic. They actually talked about this in the live stream. They said that it's based on Pulverizer and Pulverizer is one of my favorite plugins full stop. Maybe that's why I like it. But I would love to have this compressor as a as its own rack extension, just like a single, single knob compressor. That would be dope. I also love a Mimic how we have these send effects. I've seen a bunch of people complaining about how Mimic is lacking certain effects on the front panel. I actually don't think it needs any more. I agree with what Mateus said in regards to just having effects to shape the sound on the device. And the fact that you've got these sends here means you can put whatever effects you want in to mimic and use them as send effects. I think that is super cool and I really, really like that. Let's jump over to slice mode now. If we jump to slice mode and mimic, we've got playthrough on, so it's playing through all of the following slices once we've hit one. Never gonna let you go. We can do that as well on simpler. There's a poly, mono, and through option. So we're in Mimic with slice mode. We've got playthrough on. The only way we are able to predetermine what slices we want are if we drag the sensitivity slider. Now we can input them manually, of course, but the only preset option we have is the sensitivity slider. That's not affected at all by tempo of the session. Whereas if we look at simpler, Never, um, 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 we have select by transient where we also have a sensitivity option. We can select by beat. Never go, go, go. 
And this is something that I really like. When you have it selecting transients only, you're locked in to starting your samples at the beginning of the, the transient, obviously. I found that you can get some really, really interesting musical ideas when you cut to the beat because the melodic phrase of the instrument or whatever is not necessarily starting on the beat where it cuts. However, because the instrument's playing in time, it's still pretty musical in terms of its changes. Here's an example of what I'm talking about from a beat that I made in Machine. So this is an example of a beat where I used that beat chop up thing. That was the sample that I used. I split it up in grid mode and that's how I get all of these random slices that are not based on transients. And that's my favorite thing to do because then we can take patterns and get stuff like this. I mean, like, there's endless opportunities. Let's let's just go drums, flute, we'll solo those. Yeah, I took a flute sample, I chopped it up by the beat and came up with an entirely different flute part. I wouldn't have necessarily had those ideas if I was restricted to playing the samples only from the transients. So I've got this beat division, cool, cool, cool. Uh, there's also the region division. Now the region division splits it up into a predetermined set of regions. So Ableton gives us the ability to go any number from 1 to 64. 1 to 64 is going to give you the ability to put every slice of that sampler on every single pad of a launch pad or an Ableton push or something like that. And then we've got manual mode, which you can put it wherever you want. So this was probably one of my biggest disappointments when I found out Mimic didn't have beat mode especially, because as I said, that's one that I use all the time when I'm doing this kind of beat juggling thing because I think it promotes really interesting creative ideas that you don't get when you're only working with transients. So that's a basic overview of the differences between the pitch mode and slice mode between Mimic, Simpler and Machine. But I also wanted to talk about the difference in drum modes. We've got Mimic Creative Sample here on multi slot mode where we get eight drum beats. But I wanted to compare that to the drum rack in Ableton. The drum rack gives you 16 to start with, and then you literally get infinite numbers of, well, not infinite, but you get a ridiculously large number of additional slots. And they all kind of map to the 16 grid. It's essentially the notes up the keyboard. So you have 16 of them and you can take it to more than a hundred probably. I don't know why you'd ever want a hundred drum hits in one instrument, but you can is the point. You're not limited to just eight. Now in Mimic, we've got these eight slots and each of the slots, the sampler does its own thing. This is exactly the same situation that we have happening in Ableton. We've got these ridiculously high number of slots and within each of these slots, we've got a different sampler. So it's the exact same set up, only we're not limited to A. Also the really cool thing in the drum rack in Ableton that you can't do in Mimic is that we can put whatever effects we want after the fact. Like let's say we wanted to add a reverb on that. We could do that. Now there is a reverb on only that hit. And I can do that with as many effects as I want. Now, you could do the same thing in Mimic because you have these sends, which are gonna allow you to run a few more effects. So there's that as well. And on Mimic, you can also take the slots out 
and theoretically run as many other effects as you want through it. So there, you know, there there is ways around it. I'm not saying that the Ableton One is better purely for that reason, but I am saying that I think it's really, really frustrating that we only have eight slots in Mimic without having to continually stack Mimics on top of each other. So the other sample that I use all the time is Machine by Native Instruments. And I often use this as a drum machine in tracks, but it's also fantastic for juggling samples. And there's a bunch of different modes we can use to change that. Here we've got the detect mode with the sensitivity knob that works in exactly the same way as it does with the other samplers. We've got the split mode. It gives us the option to go between 4, 8, 16, and 32. So if I'm splitting a sample, that's what I'd usually do. Never gonna give you let you let you let you lie. Never gonna give you let you let you let you never go. I'm, I'm. Now that's a good example of why you might not want to split to transients. Because you're not going to get a transient there, but it does give you a kind of interesting thing that you might put into some music. I'm mine. Never go, never go, never go. I'm mine. Never go, never go. No. That's the thing that I find you don't stumble upon as often if you're stuck with splitting to transients. We've also got grid mode. Grid mode is beat mode in Ableton, basically. That says that this is our tempo and we are going to split it into quarter notes. I'm up. Again, you're not going to get something like that if you split on transients because we have this cutting slices after transients or whatever. So we're cutting in and out of words at points that are not expected based on the track that we've got. But I find this is where you get the most creative juggling from. And finally, we have manual mode. Now, if we remove all of the slices that are in here, we start with this flashing button. We hit it. Never gonna give you up. I'm never gonna let you go. Never gonna say goodbye, no. And it throws in as many samples as I chuck in wherever the heck I want it. That is so much easier than clicking manual samples in. I get that Reason does not have a like tactile pad like this, but wouldn't it be sick if in manual mode in Reason, it played back the sample, you could just click a button to input it where you wanted to. Never gone up. So I really like grid mode. I use that a ton. Once you've got your sample sliced how you want it to, in this example, you can go apply, select a new bank, go okay. And now it splits all of our slices over a drum pad. Never gonna give you up. Now you usually want to select all and put them in the same choke group so that you don't get them overlaying each other. Never go let you let you go. Never go go let you let you go. But one thing you can do here as well that you can't do a mimic is let you let you let you put effects on individual slices. We do have effects that we can put on the group, but say I wanna um, say I wanna put something on that. I could chuck a I could chuck a reverb. On there, I can use the same reverb that I was using in Ableton. In Ableton. Let's check a delay on that. That'd be cool. So yeah, um, can't do anything like that with Mimic, which makes me a little sad. Now, I totally get that different samplers have different strengths and are better suited for different things. I use Simpler and Machine, both quite heavily, for different things. The point is that both Simpler and Machine have a lot of the same basic functionality that Mimic is lacking. I think if Mimic added that basic functionality, then Mimic would be a freaking awesome competitor and even, even tool to use alongside these other ones. So those are my thoughts on what Mimic is lacking. As you can see, they're primarily based around slice mode features. But one thing Matthias said in the live stream is they're not necessarily going out to make sense that can do everything. We want to limit the effects for kind of sound shaping stuff. Right. But we know people like in their combinators or, or something like that want to add the effects they want. So this was just a way to... A, I think this is a nice, a, neat way to do this. That's one of the most important things when designing something. And uh, here I'm not trying to toot our horn saying we do everything right, but 
giving an instrument or anything like its its character and its uh, kind of uniqueness and its strengths is often about what you avoid putting there. I'm personally not a firm believer on of a, like an instrument that does everything. They're filled with so many options that you can sometimes get like almost writer's block from opening it. I always think uh, about. We try to it? err on the side of of more like a device that that feels like a cohesive thing. I actually agree with that. This is one of the things I have liked about Reason over the years is that they are kind of designed for a specific thing. However, the slice mode features that I want, I don't think fit into that category of like throwing everything in. This is something I've noticed with a lot of Reason devices. It's not about making a synth that can do everything. They just kind of go only halfway there in implementing some features. It can do slice mode, awesome. That doesn't mean it can do everything, but it can do slice mode, but we're not gonna implement slice mode properly. We're only gonna give you like one transient detection thing that actually limits your creative options. There are kind of melodic ideas that I can't come up with while sample juggling if I don't have access to like a grid mode or something like that. And so Matthias has already suggested that there are going to be upgrades and iterations to devices. I really, really want them to add extra slice mode functionality to Mimic because I think that would be awesome. beat from last week it actually made these parts in time but uh check this out real quick this is one of the things that's fun about the reason rack is how you can rewire stuff so so what i've done is i've got the mimic running into the pulverizer which is running into an echo and then the echo is running into the stereo imager but then what i've done with the stereo imager is split the low band and the high band I've got the high band going into this audiomatic with the radio setting on, and I've got the low band going into this bass amp, and then I'm combining them again down here with this spider audio merger splitter, and it's going into a master bus compressor, and then it's going into synchronous. I also have this LFO controlling the transform knob on the automatic. And I have also automated a bunch of shifts in the parameters on the automatic and or the audiomatic and the stereo imager. So if we watch the dry wet knob and I think that knob there, the mono wide knob, you can see what it's doing. Let's just have a listen to it by itself. <laughs> So they kind of like, I don't know what to call it, that slice hit kind of like widens out just for that hit and then pops back. And the LFO is automating the transform knob, so that's giving texture. Or the, I should say, the audiomatic is only turning on for that one that widens. And so the LFO is changing the texture of the one that widens by automating the transform knob. <laughs> That was a little bit of messing around I did with the, the beat that I started making last week. But I just thought I'd show that because that is an example of what I do really like to do with the Reason Rack. I think it's awesome for kind of coming up with creative things like that. It's just a fun place to work. But I feel a little shortchanged because I can't do what I want to do from a sampling perspective and mimic and then follow it up with all of this stuff. If I want to sample chop by grids or beats, I'm gonna to have to use machine or simpler. And then it's just not the same. I can't connect machine and simpler up in the rack the same way that I can with Mimic. So I really love doing this kind of stuff in Reason. I think it's fun, but I don't like feeling limited by a slice mode that only gives me half the functionality that I can get from like every other sampler that I have. But that is the video, guys. I hope you found it insightful seeing what the differences are between 
mimic simpler and machine go check out that live stream if you haven't already i am feeling uh, kind of encouraged by some of the things that matthias said in it in regards to the future of reason and updates to mimic and other devices I'm still holding out for reason 12 can't wait to see what's in that give this video a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and let me know in the comments what your thoughts are what have you tried with mimic and how are you feeling about Reason 12 after hearing some of this stuff from that live stream? I'll be doing more videos on Reason 12 as soon as that drops, so I will catch you guys. Then.